everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. So today's topic for the video is all about articulation, basically using your tongue when playing the recorder. Now, <laughs> this is a really broad topic. I may as well be standing here saying, hi, I'm doing a video today about speaking. So I'm gonna try and break it down into like manageable chunks that are actually useful for you as a player. Often people ask what they can do to make their playing more expressive and more beautiful and I really think a big part of the answer lies in how you use your tongue. What is the tongue used for? It's used to begin every note that you play. Do, do, do. Later this may change but we'll get to that. And there are two ways you can vary this. You can vary how strong that tongue stroke is. And you can vary the length of the note by deciding when your tongue is going to stop the sound. So we have length and we have strength. Using your tongue to decide how long each note is. On one extreme, we have the shortest possible note that you can make, I'm going to refer to this as staccato and that we are doing with starting and stopping the note with the tongue very quickly. At the other end of the spectrum we are going to have legato which is the absence of the tongue. gradations in between. One step back from legato is portato and that is like do 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 do. Um, the sound is continuous but the tongue is just interrupting slightly at the beginning of each note. One step backwards and we just have separated non-legato playing. different lengths of notes using your tongue that we can help make a piece really beautiful and expressive. For example, becomes varying the lengths of each note it gets this whole new dimension. The strength of your articulation. For this we're going to look at some consonants. Uh, the ones most often used in recorder playing are T, D, R and L in order from strongest to weakest. tricky bit. You can change the strength of your articulation with using different consonants, but you are not changing your airstream. You're not blowing more or less. This is because your tongue is a muscle and a muscle has strength and you can choose how much of that strength you want to use. Does that make any sense? So how are we going to use this? You could have a passage like Maybe you want to do the first one with a T and the rest with D's, like ta da 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 da. Or ta da 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 ta. We're really getting into the subtleties here, but that is so nice. We also have two more consonants the K and the G. Those you do with the back of your tongue and they are used for double tonguing. Digga 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 and triple tonguing. Digga 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 and that enables you to articulate much faster than with single tonguing. Recap, 
Your articulation concerns the length of the note when you use your tongue to start and stop it, and also the strength of the note, what consonant you use to start that note with. Great, brilliant, Sarah. How do we practice this? I will be honest, this isn't going to come overnight and working on articulation is something that I, as a professional player, am still working on today. But I'm going to give you some tips to give you a way in and even just being aware of this can already help a lot. Tip number one, a lot of my students find it difficult to play legato and to kind of make the tongue more independent from what the fingers are doing. So to try and achieve this tongue independence, let's just first get the fingers and the air moving and we're going to leave the tongue out of it. This can help to stop your tongue from going along automatically. Once you've got the random fingering kind of secure without the tongue, you can try playing random notes and passages, but more in a melodic style. And now we're going to try playing something with tongue, without tongue, with tongue, without tongue. time you go back to the with tongue version, try and make it slightly different. This time staccato, this time portato. And then when you have that down, let's try and mix it up. Staccato, normal. Staccato, normal. The eventual aim is that you can take a piece that you've practiced and improvise the articulations each time to give it a new feeling when you play. The other tip I'm going to give you is for the strength of the articulation, so basically what consonant you are using. Let's take the D, do it with me, and really try and feel in your mouth where your tongue is hitting. A lot of problems arise because the tongue is hitting in an awkward place or it's hitting in a different place every time. So we're gonna do our de 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 and you're gonna move your tongue forwards and backwards in your mouth. Again, this is just freeing everything up. I'm all about freeing things up. Ideally, you want your tongue to be hitting on that little ridge of gum behind your teeth. So not on your teeth, like the the the, not back in your mouth, like the the the, but. And then I want you to try and do this again and make sure your tongue is hitting in the same place every time. It's not going around like that. And take your recorder. Of course we want to apply this articulation to a real piece. The most important thing is to sing the passage how you want to hear it. Yes, I am telling you to sing. No, no one has to hear you. By singing something, we end up inadvertently telling ourselves how we want it to sound. For example, we wouldn't sing da 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 and try and feel which notes are more strongly articulated, which ones have a little staccato, which ones have a legato with them. Okay. I'll be honest, when I very first started learning about articulation, I found it so abstract and so strange and it really helped me to have written down exercises in a book that I could just do. For that reason, I'm going to share with you some books that really helped me. I liked that I could go back and read the explanation again and again and try and understand it, try exercises, reflect on them. I needed something physical to hold on to. The first book, it's very technical and quite dry, but it has so much material, is uh, The Complete Articulator by Case Booker. 
This is basically a book full of exercises in every possible combination of syllables, of consonants. Of course, in Volta von Hauer's Modern Recorder Player, I talk about this a lot, book one has a huge chapter on articulation with step-by-step -step explanations and exercises, that's the word. So this is so fantastic, but it's really if you want to get into the tiniest, finest, nuanced details. We also have the great book, The Finishing Touch to Practicing by Barrett Svonhofer. Um, this book is a really accessible, really nicely laid out and illustrated book on how to practice things. It can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel and this book really shows you how you can make your practice sessions <sighs> yeah, enjoyable and manageable. For me, a really great way of practicing was to actually practice it in real pieces because that is the aim, isn't it? Music making. So something like a Baroque sonata was really great. I would take a small passage and repeat that passage trying every possible combination of articulation in both length and strength. And in the end, you pick the one that you find the most beautiful. In conclusion, exploring the world of articulation is so good for your playing and for your musical expression. You have a whole toolbox, a whole universe of possibilities living inside your mouth. And this is such a huge topic, I hope I've given a kind of coherent introduction into it. And there'll definitely be more videos on articulation type things, so if you have requests or suggestions, comment it as well. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Up here, I'm going to link to my second ever tutorial, which was on double tonguing with diddle. Thanks so much for watching Team Recorder and have a great day. Bye!